water. It's all we need. Well, okay, a little electricity or sunlight wouldn't hurt either. But water, in its component parts, could change the way we use energy in the world, and might actually be able to save the planet. In essence, water is made up of two component parts, hydrogen and oxygen. You might even be aware of this. We call it H2O, or you can even call it the dreaded dihydrogen monoxide. When you separate water into hydrogen and oxygen, you get some pretty explosive potential energy. In fact, it's the same fuel that the Saturn V used in its later stages. And the key here lies with hydrogen, the little single proton with a single electron. H2, two hydrogens bonded together, stores energy really well. But rather than harnessing that energy explosively, we can actually harness it as electricity to power our homes. And cars and buses and taxis and airplanes and basically everything else you can think of that requires energy. By nature of the way this technology works, there are no emissions other than water. And you can use the energy either explosively, like to send people to the moon, or you can generate electricity directly, like you would want for a car. Now, Elon Musk has some things to say about hydrogen-powered vehicles, and I will address that in a moment, but first we need to understand how this technology works. Water electrolysis is the process of using direct current electricity, like in a battery, to separate hydrogen and oxygen from water. This works because you've got some extra electrons floating around in there, and that allows hydrogen to break off. But you can do the same thing in reverse, and essentially use hydrogen and oxygen to put together and get extra electrons. This is what's called a fuel cell, and you can run it forwards or backwards whether you want hydrogen or electricity. Now, unfortunately, to electrolyze water, we need energy. You need energy to get energy and to store energy. But luckily we can get that energy from clean sources, such as wind power or hydroelectric. Why not solar panels? Well, I'll get to that in just a moment. Another way to get hydrogen is to break down hydrocarbons, which essentially splits hydrogen and carbon, which is the rest of the molecule, away from each other. Essentially, hydrogen can come from a bunch of different places, and depending on where you get it, it's cleaner or less clean. Now, of course, the hydrogen itself doesn't emit anything, but the method of production of hydrogen does. So why isn't solar hydrogen a good option? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Researchers in Munich just discovered a way to make the solar panel even better for hydrogen. Using a microscopic lattice of gold and platinum, we can much more efficiently separate hydrogen from the hydrocarbon formic acid. The gold is essentially used to focus sunlight into really tiny little hotspots through its electron shells. Now that you have a bunch of really tiny points of light where there's lots of energy, you can use platinum as a catalyst to make reactions happen more quickly and effectively. Now this lattice is essentially two-dimensional but we can super scale it so that we have really very effective hydrogen solar farms. If you scale this up a lot, you end up with a lot of very useful hydrogen. And believe me, hydrogen is very useful. We can essentially use hydrogen in the place of some fossil fuels, like natural gas. Now, it wouldn't work perfectly. It would require reworking some of our current systems, but hydrogen is a really good fuel. This has actually been done in some smaller aircraft and is being conceptualized by bigger companies like Airbus. We can also use it to fuel cars, like I talked about with fuel cells. Now to a not-so-quick side note about Elon Musk. Elon Musk thinks that hydrogen power vehicles are just the most dumb thing, but many experts disagree. There's a place for both battery electric vehicles and hydrogen powered vehicles in the world. It depends on the application. Cars that need to travel really long distances and be able to do it quickly should be used with hydrogen. And this is just by nature of the fact that electric cars require time to charge, whereas hydrogen you can fill up and go just like you would at a gas station. With city commute Commuters, however, you can plug in overnight and then you have a car that's ready to go every single morning. So for some people, battery electric vehicles do make more sense. I think Elon Musk is just a little bit sore about the fact that things like battery powered long haul trucks just don't make sense. And yes, there's always the issue of we need somewhere to store it, but there's also the issue that our planet is burning alive. We also need somewhere to store the billions of tons of greenhouse gas emissions that we pump into the atmosphere, the thousands upon thousands of electric car batteries that have gone to waste because they've deteriorated. The world isn't going to solve itself, but hydrogen takes us one step closer to humanity's solution. Thanks for watching.